Winston set off. Goodness, there wasn't a moment to lose. If he was going to get this letter to the North Pole, he'd have to get going straight away. Winston had never experienced Christmas before, but he knew all about Father Christmas. Over the past few weeks, the entire world had gone Christmas mad. The shops were packed to the rafters from morning to night, with busy-looking people bustling about with long lists and their arms full of boxes and parcels. Winston had watched the news. What was it all about? Who was this jolly man with a beard and a smart red suit, whose picture seemed to be appearing everywhere? Then one night about a week ago, Winston had found quite a good place to sleep. It was a small den near the basement kitchen window of one of the grander houses in the city. Spots like this were always good places to spend a night, but unfortunately you couldn't stay there for very long. Cooks don't, spend, don't tend to like mice hanging around their kitchens. Luckily, no one had noticed Winston, so he had enjoyed the lovely food smells that had floated out of the open window and the great wafts of heat that rolled out every time the oven doors were opened. Later in the evening, when Winston had been thinking about going to sleep, the cook and the butler had rolled up their sleeves to get stuck into the piles of washing up and had popped the radio on to keep them company. Winston had been enthralled. There had been some lovely Christmas music, choir singing and a lot of talk about Father Christmas. Apparently on Christmas Eve, this Father Christmas person put on his nice warm coat and his hat and set off on a sleigh pulled by flying reindeer from the North Pole. He delivered presents to every child across the world and all before morning. How exciting, Winston thought, and how nice it would be to have a little fireplace all of his own to hang up a stocking. Now, standing in the alleyway, Winston sighed at the thought. Then he thought of the poor child whose letter hadn't made it to Father Christmas's house. They would wake up in the morning to find no presents in their stocking or hidden under the Christmas tree. Winston wrapped up his tatty scarf neatly around his neck again and tried to ignore the grumbling, rumbling noises coming from his tummy. This was an extremely important job. He picked up the envelope and marched decisively to the end of the alleyway and out into the street and then stopped. Where exactly is the North Pole, he wondered. He knew it was north, but quite how far north was it? His legs were only very small and the snow made it rather difficult to travel very quickly, especially lugging a letter with him all the way. He'd probably only have a few hours to get there, so he'd better make sure he was going in the right direction. All around him, people were still rushing and there were legs striding about in all directions. Tired legs belonging to commuters heading home from work. Excited legs of people going to a Christmas Eve party. And giddy little legs mainly belonging to the smaller human beings who were running about and hooting and hollering and messing about in the snow. All of this was quite confusing for Winston, who felt very tiny indeed. What I need, Winston squeaked to himself, is a map. But where could a mouse find one of those on Christmas Eve? The bookshops were closed and even the museum, which Winston knew had a great collection of very, very old maps, was shut for the holidays. Just then, an idea landed rather neatly in Winston's mind. There was a shop not far away from where he was, on Mistletoe Street, he thought, that might be able to help him. Tucking the envelope under his arm, Winston set off.